Our next speaker is uh, Emmanuel Bassi. He's a developer on the uh, GTK Plus team. Um, and he's going to talk about rainbows and unicorns, which sounds much less dangerous than penguins and lots of electricity. <laughs> Emmanuel. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. You're, you're very much welcome. Uh, just wait until the end of the talk. It, so, um, welcome everyone. Um, it's, I'm really happy to be back at LCA after Wellington three years ago. Um, so, uh, today we're going to talk about rainbows and unicorns. Uh, and by rainbows and unicorns, I'm actually talking about Cluster 2.0 and GTK4. So, um, who am I? I'm Emanuele uh, Ibasi on IRC, Twitter, email, Git whatever, and I'll be your host uh, this fine afternoon in Canberra. So um, currently I'm wearing a few hats in the GNOME community. Um, I think you might remember me from my role on the GNOME Foundation Board of Directors, um, or for my role uh, as part of the GDK development team, uh, seen here in a very, very unflattering picture. Um, or for my role as a clutter maintainer. Um, lately, I also uh, added a new app to my collection, and by the end of this talk, you will realize that it's probably more of a problem than a hat. Um, you see, I'm the editor of the GNOME Memes blog, and as part of my 12 steps program, um, I'm probably going to apologize for it uh, right now, and I'll probably be apologizing a bit more at the end of this talk. So, uh, as a disclaimer, this talk has been rated M by the ESRB for possibly mild profanity, explicit function calls, and full frontal nudity of a C structure. Uh, this talk might also give you ideas, though said ideas may not be necessarily good for you. So, uh, without further ado, let's move to rainbows and unicorns. So, let's talk about clutter. And let's start with a simple question for, question for you, my kind of audience. Um, don't worry, I don't bite. So, what does this function do? If you don't know, it's perfectly fine. As I said, I don't bite. Um, this function just calls uh, just moves the actor to uh, the actor's origin, whatever that might be, or wherever that might be, to a point at 300 by 300 in parent relative coordinates, whatever they might be. Um, now, another simple question is, what is the difference between that particular function call and this one? That is a trick question. There is no difference at all. Uh, mostly because the two blocks do exactly the same thing. One moves immediately and one moves through an interpolation, but there is no actual reason for that. Um, they just move an actor. So it clutter implicitly transitions the actor properties like position, size, color, and transformations like rotation, scaling, and other things uh, from their current value to the desired one uh, without the intervention of the developer. So it's called implicit animations. Uh, now, obviously, we cannot transition everything immediately because otherwise your UI might look very, very weird when it's starting up. So you start up with everything by at zero, zero, and suddenly stuff just repositions itself. Not good. Um, but we can set up default values, and we can take advantage of um, the knowledge that the scene graph is not actually visible on the screen uh, so that we can um, actually set up the scene uh, at the right position. And from that point onwards, uh, every change in state will be transitioned immediately uh, using the default values or whatever animation, uh, whatever duration or um, easing mode you decide to use. Um, obviously, implicit animations are not 
um, always desirable. Uh, sometimes you want to explicitly control the rotation or the scaling or the translation of, uh, um, of actors and maybe you want to control the animation so that it loops or that it reverses at the end of the iteration. So um, Clutter also provides that for you. So the core API of Clutter provides you with um, a transition base class and uh, has uh, various implementations like a property transition which just controls the interpolation of a single property of an actor or a keyframe transition which uses keyframes or uh, key positions in time and the uh, easing curve between the keyframe. Uh, or a group that holds a lot of transitions together and uh, moves them uh, together uh, at the same time. Um, if you pray at the ch church of Twinner, uh, if you ever ever used um, JavaScript or Flash, uh, you may have issues with uh, implicit animations, uh, mostly because Twinner is this kind of huge setup function that gives you the, the ability to set up all the, the various uh, properties and stuff and it's all very much explicit. My advice for you is to let Twinner go the same way the Flash went. Um, you might also think that you cannot simply animate everything inside a UI. Um, so if this is your main concern, I humbly ask you to try this approach for a bit of implicit animations and see how, how it works for you and how your code changes and how your logic changes and how the approach you use to uh, write application changes. And if it doesn't work well, um, really no worries. Um, yeah, to change that this morning after the announcement and after the announcement that Alicia Keys is now a vice president. Like Intel has made like role trailblazing. I don't know. So, <laughs> so um, this was a little bit philosophical uh, kind of take. So let's talk about interesting features in the current and in upcoming release of Clutter. And, um, let's talk about features like uh, touch, touch support, um, and gesture recognizers for application gestures, or uh, if you're not writing an application, you're writing a uh, compositing window manager, and I would ask, kindly ask you to leave. Um, you can also do system gestures and stuff. Um, uh, Cluster provides you with stuff like pinch to scale, um, rotate, swipe, pan, uh, app. Um, all the gestures that uh, define the current vocabulary of uh, touch-based interaction for applications and window managers. So uh, after that, uh, you could say that Clutter right now is in a bit of a flux. Uh, we've been changing a lot of stuff in the past 6, 12 months. And saying that it's in a and it's in kind of this state is kind of reductive because we really want to do much more um, in the future. Uh, so even if we're not breaking API and ABI at the moment, um, until we bump to the next version 2.0, uh, we still deprecate a lot of stuff. Um, I think I speak for all, everybody that also works on the GNOME platform, core platform. Um, Everybody that works on Clutter and GTK and other, other libraries there, um, we believe in uh, evolving the API, not uh, breaking it outright. Um, and the Clutter developers really think, try to think and act as application developers. Uh, some of them believe they are. Um, we are, all, we are, after all, part of a community that cares. So how do we um, go from the current position to the next one? How do we interpolate, if you uh, forgive my awful pun, um, from the current state 
to the, the next state of the cluster API? Um, well, for one, we can look at what others done, what others have done. Um, after all, we are really not the first one to deal with a with a, uh, an animation framework or or a scene graph API. Um, really, uh, we have our own special limitations um, to overcome. Um, those are currently being taken care of. Um, and there are people working on replacement technology. And I'm pretty sure that we are going to be living the future really soon. So uh, what are we going to do then? Well, we should stop carrying around a lot of crap API that we are stringing along from for the past like five to six, ten years almost. Um, except that just removing stuff is not going to make anything really better. Um, we should probably try and fix that crappy API uh, before committing to API, a new API stability a promise. Um, so we can also look at new technologies and old technologies and currently used technologies. And if we do that, we can sense a subtle uh, pattern that emerges from that particular, the, the current state of the industry. Um, so basically that pattern is apparently everyone copies from Apple and uh, even the W3C. Um, just copying is not really enough. So let's try and think new approaches as well. Um, the conventional wisdom, for instance, uh, of using threads and toolkits with a main loop is that you should not be crossing the streams. Um, but you have to realize that it's a very hard constraint not to start using to start using the multiple cores in your laptop or start using multiple cores in your mobile phone or mobile platform. Um, mostly because you have a main loop and you have a very, very hard budget, which is usually 16 milliseconds, and everything blocks. Everything can block, and everything everything will be will block. Especially if it uh, picks up something from application code. Um, things like can block things that can block are like the uh, uploading texture data uh, on your GPU um, that will block, uh, usually because of limitations of the API, um, and they will take away a slice of your budget. Um, Let's assume you want to animate your delay up for, you, for your UI while transitioning between the initial state and the final state. Um, but doing so will involve a lot of complex computations, so for in and then something will block. Uh, a complex computation that will happen is measuring text. Um, for instance, uh, which can take an arbitrary amount of time, especially with non latent languages. Um, and there goes a slice. Uh, then you have style um, computations for background images and borders and colors and whatever else that will impact the, sti the status of your, um, the, your scene, your, your UI. Um, then you may want to traverse the scene graph to build the list commands uh, that you want to send to your GPU. Uh, yeah, why not? Um, two milliseconds gone. Um, and also you might want to use some effect because you have a GPU and you want to do blurring and you don't want to, want to do shading stuff. Um, and then you're there. And this is your application code. Done. Um, in the end, you're left with a very, very tiny slice uh, for your business application and business logic. And everything that happened before, it's really like at the mercy of the library internals, the drivers. And it's not exactly two milliseconds for each operation. Some well, might take more, some might take less. Some might not be the case for each frame. But it will end up with a lot less than your 16.67 milliseconds. 
So what happens then? You start losing frames. And if you start losing enough frames, things will look like crap. So we can use some of the facilities of concurrent programming, like threads and, and other things. Um, but not for everything, maybe. I don't know. Um, you cannot thread off everything, really, but you can avoid blocking the main loop inside your own library, as inside your own application, obviously. Um, for instance, texture uploads. You can thread them off, or you can thread them off if you're uh, the uh, GL implementation as well, maybe. Um, uh, because you have only one uh, thread that cannot uh, can access the GL machinery by, uh, for each time. Uh, you cannot have multiple threads doing that. Um, you can do threading for animation. You can move the animations off the main thread. You can use a render tree so that one, uh, only one thread is guaranteed to touch the GL state machinery. Um, well, it's really not incredibly easy. Uh, because threading introduces a lot of uh, interesting issues. Um, for instance, you start taking locks. Uh, so you start uh, taking, uh, taking more time taking locks than actually doing your, your job. Um, or you start invalidating stuff for multiple threads and you have to synchronize stuff. Uh, you have to protect the user. And by protecting the user, I mean protecting the uh, not just the user of your library, but also the user that it's actually using the application that your library is using. So this is really our problems, and they will take some time to get them worked out at the uh, at the right level. So um, let's stop talking about the future and let's talk about GTK instead. Um, so if you thought the cluster was in flux after these few slides, you clearly haven't used GTK in a while. Um, uh, yes, the process hasn't been really painless for everybody. We've had people complaining, yes, and especially people writing themes for I don't know why, but it's fine. Um, so the instability is there not because we like to impose misery on our users, uh, well, not everyone. I do. Um, we're trying. We're busy trying to fix the in, the issues that introducing the CSS machinery, for instance, has brought down to the applications. We have to fix every single for every single minor release cycle. We suddenly have to fix the fact that CSS is very slow. Um, so, making everything work uh, by the design. Um, design specifications and by the application specification, by the theme author specifications is pretty much impossible. So some stuff has to be dropped. Um, just for fun, uh, be right before this talk, I just had a look at what happened in the world between the release of GTK 2.0 and GTK 3. Um, GTK 2.0, for those who don't remember, it was 2002, March. And GTK 3.0 was um, 2011 October, I think. Um, this is what happened. Uh, Qt 3.0 was released. Uh, Apple's iMac G4. Uh, this first Spider-Man movie. Um, the Two Towers. Um, the Columbia disaster, the shuttle disaster. Uh, Iraq was invaded. Uh, MySpace was launched. Uh, I think the two were connected in some ways. Um, the Return of the King was released, uh, which was awesome. Uh, Pirates of Korean, which was not awesome. Um, the Da Vinci Code was released, and I'm talking about the book, actually. Um, uh, George W. Bush was elected for the second time, for no apparent reason. Um, Facebook was launched. Um, YouTube was launched. Uh, QT4 was released. I I think I sense a pattern there. Um, Star Wars Episode 3 was re-released or released or whatever, I don't know. Um, uh, Twitter was launched. Um, Pluto was not planned anymore. Uh, iPhone was launched. Amazon Kindle, the first Kindle was launched. The 3G phone, iPhone was launched. The 3GS was launched. The 4 was launched. Uh, so let's get a little bit, let's try not to wait another nine years for another major release, maybe this time, you know. So 
it, the, the real thing that it's, it's here is that GDK is still very much not complete at all. Uh, I don't think it will ever be complete, but right now it's not providing what, made, what uh, modern toolkit should provide, uh, which, for instance, the easier layout management. Uh, right now it's a bit on the clunky side, all boxes packed inside boxes, packed inside boxes, packed inside boxes, which served us well for a while uh, because it avoided uh, pixel perfect positioning inside the, the screen and was, uh, well, awful, like Windows. Um, but also animating frames around the content. The content changes, the frames has to change with that, and the window frame has to change as well and do other stuff. Um, and most of all, have a predictable output. So if you do something in one way, then doing it again will yield the same results instead of being at the mercy of uh, theming and being at the mercy of accessibility and being at the mercy of a window manager and whatever else. Um, so, in reality, what, how do we go from now to, uh, to that point um, is probably just breaking API again uh, in a couple of years, maybe, uh, 18, 24 months, who knows. Um, but we cannot chuck everything away, mostly because um, GK has lots of institutional memory in its Git repository. Um, also, GTK encodes protocols and behaviors that come from various platforms and various iterations of the platform. Um, also, GTK has lots of widgets, but more importantly, GTK provides API for applications to write their own widgets. So, we cannot do, we cannot remove everything and just start from scratch and just use Clutter for everything, mostly because. Um, We'd have to throw a lot of code that depends on GTK away just because we decided to change the way stuff works completely from, from scratch. Um, so we'd have to remove some stuff like existing widgets, uh, you know, of like GTK tree view or GTK text view or probably GTK dialogue. Um, definitely we'd have to get rid of GTK menu. Um, so in some ways we're already doing a bunch of this stuff in GTK3, like we're trying to remove part of the requirements for using GTK3 view in your UI uh, by using actual widgets instead of this weird uh, parallel hierarchy of cell renders or whatever. Um, but it's still not fast enough when you have to deal with thousand widgets and CSS transitions. Uh, so if you start throwing CSS in, it gets really slow and really complicated really, really fast. So um, instead of chucking everything away and rewrite on top of Canvas, why not make GTK use a Canvas? So it, we can transition in a safe manner uh, between the two, the current state and the, the next state. Um, for instance, like this, who knows? Um, every widget will contain a tree of actors, for instance, um, and we can learn, then we can learn from the current usage of the integration library like Clutter GTK that is currently used by GNOME 3 applications that um, allows you to switch seamlessly between GTK and Clutter at the same, in the same process. Um, we could, I don't know, implement the um, CSS box model inside GTK. Well, not really the exact same box model because that would be insane. Um, actually, this is not my, my, my view. Uh, this is Rock, uh, Robert O'Callaghan that works on um, Gecko um, and CSS and stuff. Whoa, thank you, Network Manager, for being so helpful. Um, so every widget becomes a collection of cluster actors that can be moved and transitions and they just display texture data or text or whatever else. Um, and become so the container, the semantic container for this, this kind of data, this kind of information. They don't really draw anything on the screen by themselves. Uh, they don't receive actual signals for uh, windowing system events. They uh, are 
the entry point for delegate objects that will receive events um, that we call them event controllers. Uh, they are just like gesture recognizer, but recognizes, but uh, yeah, they're basically just gesture UI gesture recognizer. If you have ever uh, looked at um, uh, UI kit uh, on iOS. So basically, we are trying to merge the, tool, the two toolkits into one while keeping them uh, separate enough that you can still use Clutter by, by itself um, because sometimes there are uh, requirements for not using a complex widget toolkit like GTK. Um, merging, merging the various approaches always works, as uh, demonstrated by Dragon Ball. Um, and also allows us to overcome a simple uh, issue of inside the, the GNOME community, which is a kind of a lack of resources right now. Uh, so what can you do? Well, I know what I can do, but what can you do? Um, so we have uh, roadmaps. Um, you can file bugs for the things you want to do. Uh, and things you want to achieve and add to the to the toolkits, both toolkits. Um, give us feedback. Um, it, I'm I'm obviously always pleased to get new mail. Um, if you are a designer, for instance, uh, you can provide us with feedback on um, common um, widgets and common UI controls that can be used uh, in our uh, in the new world. Um, also, you can, if you're graphically inclined, you can also help us with the CSS, um, just in case. Um, so, follow the roadmap on the wiki, um, file bugs, attach patches if you are, uh, if you are awesome. Um, these are the, the two roadmaps, and detail what needs to be done uh, and how can you get there? Um, so, what does the future of GTK and Clutter look like? Maybe something like this, um, or maybe something like this. Oh, yes. So, uh, thank you. I was actually really, really quick. Yeah, that's lots of time. So really go have fun. What's going to happen with GL rendering? Is every widget going to be GL capable? Or? Um, widgets are not GL uh, drawables, or they will be, uh, the top level will be a GL drawable, yes. Um, I think I can speak for everyone when I say that everything else is stupid. There's no way to actually do stuff that doesn't involve GL these days. Why do you have a GPU? Why do you have a GPU, right? <laughs> Um, just a comment. Um, you're saying about how we have like 18 milliseconds to do all of our business logic before we start dropping frames in our UI, and that's effectively reduced down to four milliseconds because of all the pretty that we have to do before then. Um, no, 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 no. I'm not <laughs> talking about pretty. Uh, I'm or even even setting up the layout of that. Um, uh, setting up the layout of the UI, I don't consider that pretty. I consider that. Oh yeah, yeah. Work. It's it's important. I agree, but. Isn't there something wrong if we're spending like four fifths of the time doing that? And I'd rather have an application that does its business logic in one second than having it look pretty and to do it in five. Oh no, absolutely. Uh, that yeah, that was my point entirely. Uh, right now we are serializing all the operations, and you end up with your application business logic that has to follow the previous business, the, the library business logic. Uh, which is kind of wrong. We should try and we have a hard limit, which is the vertical um, refresh rate of your yeah. of your screen that you, we use to clock everything. Um, so what we have to do is trying to avoid that the library takes out the the code that 
uh, the amount of time that your application has inside the particular frame. If your application business logic is outside of a particular frame cycle, then you can do whatever you want, obviously. But um, if you're inside that particular frame cycle, like for instance, you have to compute every, sing every time the, the frame changes something, mm -hmm. like an interpolation of a color or whatever, that there, there are lots and lots of stuff that happen that can happen inside that particular frame, then we have to remove the library uh, business logic from the, from the critical path because that's where everything breaks, basically. So no, you're absolutely right. We have to, to try and avoid the application logic to, to be impacted by the library. Uh, you don't have enough main threads. Yeah, we can add them. We can do whatever we want. <laughs> no more questions? Oh, oh there, is, there is a lot of time. I was really, really worried, actually. Could uh, you guys talk to the GStreamer people a bit and have better integration between GStreamer streams and GNOME? Yes, we are. Or uh, between GTK. We, we are actually we are actually talking to the GStreamer guys. We have an integration library for Clutter and GStreamer um, that is unimagin unimaginatively <coughs> called Clutter GStreamer um, uh, because they want to do stuff with GL and we also do stuff with GL so. We try to communicate as much as possible to avoid blocking and breaking, threading, and all the other fun parts of GL. Um, so we, we always talk with, with, uh, with the GStreamer guys. And uh, they also provide us provided um, code to us that allows you to just uh, take a video stream and put inside a Clutter, um, Clutter UI or a Clutter GTK UI. And it just works, even threading and filters and uh, stuff and that doesn't impact the application code at all. Uh, it's currently being used by Totem, for instance, uh, the video player, uh, Cheese, the the, um, um, the the webcam application in GNOME. Um, it, they're basically using Clutter G Streamer as a as a simple AP API to get video on screen um, because in that in that particular department, G Streamer kind of sucks. Um, but it's, it's, it's something that we talk to them a lot because we don't want lots of copies, we don't want to p uh, block in any way, shape, or form uh, the main loop since we both use the same uh, main context. So yeah, uh, we are always talking to them and they are talking to us and we try to make it work and not suck. You mentioned earlier about easier layout management. Do you have an idea, like, well, what are we going to replace the boxes inside boxes with in terms um, of? One of the things that I've been, one of the things that Clutter already provides is some form of constraint-based layout. Uh, so you can define whether uh, um, an actor is aligned to another actor or uh, whether it's bound to the size of the same actor, or same position and stuff. Uh, that's kind of useful. Uh, also for animating, but it's kind of also problematic, right, as it is, is implemented right now. So it will be, it has to be fixed. Um, but it's being used currently in complex uh, applications. Um, another thing that, one thing that could replace the box, um, the box layout management is to have a, uh, expand the constraint based layout for instance, and have objects that can be animated and can work as springs and can animate the, the uh, transitions and stuff without requiring a deeply nested hierarchy. Is there plans on uh, making it easier to maintain a different UI for different form factors? So yes. So sort of like loading an extra style sheet sort of thing for yeah, a absolutely. different size screen? Yes. Though we don't really know if... Uh, that is one problem. We don't really know if we want to give CSS the access to the layout system because it may work for a web page and CSS Zen Garden is awesome, uh, but uh, you probably don't want to do that for a UI. Uh, just loading a different t a theme, the UI changes completely uh, and 
it gets really, really weird really, really fast. Um, yeah, just one comment more on like uh, containers and boxes and boxes. One common thing that you end up doing, which is where you basically have the GTK tree view and similar widgets, is when you have tens of thousands of items to display, then you don't actually want to have to traver traverse and actually keep all these objects in memory. And those are, that's also things you can actually have in the container implementation so that it just actually creates the objects that are actually visible in your viewport. Um, and there's various ways you could end up doing that for both grids and um, more fluid types of um, content traversal for the user. Another thing that we do in Clutter is decou we decouple the um, layer management policy from the actual scene graph element. So you can have the same scene graph element use different layer managers uh, one at a time, obviously, but you can switch between, between various. Uh, so it's all delegate objects instead. So you don't have to subclass G object, uh, Clutter Actor, for instance, or do other stuff. Yes? Manuel, I'm curious, just go up a little bit the stack. I'm curious what, if we sh could talk a bit about what you think, what your views are on what we might do to increase GTK3 adoption. Um, a couple of key examples that come to mind are mm -hmm. the two major browsers. Um, the Chromium, auth the core author was like, no way in hell because I have to support older systems. And then he started trying it and kind of got halfway there, but I, I get the impression that he's a bit stuck. And that seems to be pretty common. Um, I mean, I took our language bindings through it and it went okay, but there's an awful lot of people that are stuck. Transition wiki page aside, um, mm -hmm. it, it, there's a big, lo there's a lot of negative inertia, like, oh, GTK2 is stable, so we'll just stay there. And right. it's nothing of the sort. I mean, you know, the last time anybody worked on that code base is the last time I saw you in Berlin in 2008. Yeah. It's been five years since anyone touched that code and people still, the impression out there is that it's, it's still cool to use GTK2. And we've yeah. got to change that, but unfortunately that's getting wrapped up with some of the mean pressure around GNOME 3, right. and so how can we break that logjam? Um, yeah, that's hard. Um, that's, a, that's a very tough issue. Uh, I mean, there are still people working on GTK1 applications, um, and I've personally answered questions of people trying to port from, I, I personally answered to two type of questions. The one, and, uh, the one that was, uh, how do I port my GTK1 application to GTK2? Uh, that was asked like uh, a year ago. Um, we are GTK 3.6 now. Um, and the other one was, I need to fix this GTK 1 application. Um, I don't even know if I have a copy of GTK 1 anywhere except the Git repository. Um, so that's, that's a particular, particularly tough question uh, because there are still people using legacy stuff. There are still people using Motive, for fuck's sake. Um, the how do we convince them to move to GDK3 without basically removing GDK2 from the repository, uh, which would actually be my suggestion, um, is trying to make sure that we provide enough features for new stuff. Uh, we have to provide um, an incentive for migrating. For instance, the Chromium guys, the Chromium guy, um, I don't know, yeah, maybe we'll revisit the situation in about a year, uh, or maybe in six months, I don't know. Uh, I know the Firefox guys have been trying to, have been porting the, the, the UI to GTK3, and the only thing that is basically blocking them, or was blocking them until they did a massive hack, uh, was the uh, Flash plugin. The Flash plugin requires GTK2, because Adobe sucks. Um, uh, if there are Adobe employees, I do not apologize. You suck. Um, especially on Linux. God. Um, but the, 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 they solved it, the Firefox guy solved it by basically having two separate processes and do weird crap with them, uh, with wrappers and stuff. But they, they already did. They, they already ported GTK3, and I guess Chromium, the Chromium guys will have to do that eventually. Mostly because there is some churn in distributions and Linux systems. At some point, GTK2 will not be there by default. And we'll, it's, it's the usual long tail process, right? So you, at some point, you get to the, to the situation where GTK2 is legacy, is really legacy. We can accelerate that by providing features, by providing new interesting stuff. Um, I understand that breaking API again is not going to make us any favor favor on that. Uh, it's not going to make us a lot of new friends 
as well. Um, C above really Linux. Um, but on the other hand, if the toolkit is cool and provides cool stuff and it works in a modern environment as a modern toolkit does, then we might get people to migrate. Um, yeah, I mean, the only thing is, at some point during the GTK 2 to 3 process, there was the idea of let's just seal everything and then release 3.0 and then we are, we are going to do stuff from that point on. And people told us, no, you suck. You have to give us something because we cannot justify the porting process. We actually did, and people didn't migrate immediately, which was kind of sad, but it was what they asked, and we should do the same. Speaking as a programmer who hasn't upgraded from GTK 2 to 3, it's not because the API isn't better, it's because the new user interface is not very popular. In particular, right now, I think, yeah. in our department, we're waiting to see who wins out of Ubuntu and GNOME 3. Yeah. So it's not the API that's a problem. It's the new and exciting features that the known team Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there, there is, there is the, the all the political bullshit aside. Um, yeah, there is, there is GNOME 3 and there is Unity and both. GTK is a lot more than GNOME. Um, it's used on more platforms. It's used for more stuff. Uh, including Unity. Including Unity as well, yeah. Um, but on the other hand, what's driving GTK feature-wise, appearance-wise, and API-wise is GNOME. There is no way around it. If somebody else decides to jump in and provide support for other platforms and other, and other environments, then, well, it's, it, he or she are welcome to join the party. It's, if they don't, then GNOME will continue driving. Uh, so. Yeah, that's, that's problematic. And again, resources are not abundant. Um, it's not a problem of, it's a problem of scaling, right? So the, the team is more, like, like more or less kind of growing with a certain curve and adoption is growing with a different curve. And at some point there's a lot of distance between what we have to do to cover that particular uh, user base and what we can actually do. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>